I went overseas with the 187th Airborne Infantry Regiment. I was in the 3rd Battalion. I went over with them in, in September of 1950, and in January of 1951, I was assigned to command, organize, train, and command a Special Ranger Company for operation behind the enemy lines. The regular Ranger Companies that went over were disbanded by then, and the uh, General Mc Colonel McGee at that time had a, a mission of organizing a or, uh, unit to go behind the enemy lines for the purpose of intelligence and of course at, from the proper time for sabotage and guerrilla warfare. And I was selected out of the uh, Far East Command. I felt highly honored I was selected out of the Far East Command to command this unit. My particular unit was hand-picked South Korean Marines because they would be less, uh, uh, they would be uh, more likely to survive in North Korea than would an American. So it's uh, in, a, in a Caucasian in North Korea, you don't need a trained military observer to tell you don't belong there, where the others they do, although we wore uniforms all the time, with the exception of a few agents that we had, they wore civilian clothes. The Korean Marines at that time actually did get the pick of the troops. <laughs> you know, they did. this was no, no joke, they actually did. So 8th Army, uh, the high command in Korea made an agreement with the Korean Marines that that this particular unit would be selected, f picked by them, commanded and trained by an American officer, and uh, for for uh, uh, hazardous duty. Uh, the commanding general of the Korean Marine Corps handpicked these men. They were ab uh, there was a hundred men, and they were absolutely outstanding. And believe me. If you're an up upfront ranger trainer and you have to stay in front of these guys, it's an awful tough job. We never lost a single man in training, not one. The unit was top secret uh, 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 all the time, even during training. I don't ask me why. Our most sophisticated equipment was a machine gun, and we, the boats we had, we had to capture from the enemy. So I don't really see anything all that secret, but it was several years before I could say anything about it. Well, we, we didn't have much to scrounge from, and I would not allow them to use an airdrop, because I didn't, don't think you had to be a military genius to figure out when you saw a parachute coming down that somebody's going to be underneath it. <laughs> so we were, the only time we ever had a parachute drop was when the, uh, we, the Air Force, the only time in my whole Army career, they mistakenly uh, strafed us. They didn't hit anybody in the Ranger Company, but they killed a whole bunch of civilians. And I authorized them to use a lot of our medical supplies. So I authorized an airdrop the next day to give us some medical supplies, but we left two days later. But otherwise, we were supplied by boat. The American Ranger Companies, of course, we had the 8th Army Ranger Company, which, which uh, was commanded by, a, at that time, a Lieutenant Puckett, who's, by the way, in the Ranger Hall of Fame now. And uh, Colonel McGee, later General McGee, was the one responsible for organizing this company. Later, right after, after this company went out, he says, now this may be off a little bit, then we had a number of airborne ranger companies that came to Korea. Unfortunately, a lots of those companies were just about annihilated because uh, uh, of being put in positions where they, you know, fought. And, uh, uh, and in some cases, I'm not an authority on that because I was still with the 187 when that happened, but I do know that some of them suffered tremendous casualties.